Boss Lady Conversations with Monica L. And Coach Kaya. Boss ladies are vulnerable, authentic, love, hopeful, abundant, respected. Boss ladies are you. you. Welcome back, listeners. Thank you so much for joining us for another Boss Lady Conversation. We're back with season two, and I'm your girl, Coach Kaya. I'm a boss wife mompreneur, sister, writer, and certified transformational coach. What do I do? I help people heal their past, access their power, and reignite their dreams while manifesting the miracles that really matter. My IG handle is at I am Coach Kaya. And hello, boss ladies. I'm Monica L., a boss lady, Cleveland-born, L.A. raised on a journey of freedom and happiness as an educator, entrepreneur, self-published author, and poet, I believe all things are possible through synergy. My IG handle is at Monica L underscore writer. <sighs> it is season two, Coach Kaya. Oh, we did it. We did it. We did it. And we just want to say we appreciate everyone's support so much. I mean, it's just been overwhelming. Everyone is so excited about season two. They've been asking about the launch. And I just want to personally thank Coach Kaya. You know, this is a two-woman operations for the most part. We have a lot of supporters, but at the end of the day, you know, from production with talent acquisition, Coach Kaya has really stepped in and filled in those gaps. <laughs> and I am just so appreciative. Again, balancing everything, being a mom, author, she has a new book. And I mean, just reach out to her. She's open to accepting clients. So please tell someone to tell someone. This is a movement and we are really here for you. You can always email us at bossladyconversations at gmail.com. Aw, sister, thank you for the love. Uh, listen, like you said, it's me and it's you. So we are doing it. Thank you for all the amazing marketing that you do. Just staying steadfast with social media because, you know, <laughs> you know, that's the whole job. Like people get paid for that. So we appreciate you so much. And all the good things are coming our way. So we, we appreciate all the boss ladies who have been on the show previously, all the boss ladies who have joined us for season two. And we know that everyone is going to learn and grow so much. And that's really the point of what we're doing. I definitely wanted to say SoBiz, the book is now out. So please send me a message on at I am Coach Kaya for your copy, for your personalized copy. I'll be happy to get that out to you. And overall, we just hope that the boss ladies have been enjoying the podcast. We thank God for giving us this platform. Our goal is always creativity, growth, mindset shifting, healing, supporting, and always, always, always being intentional. So today we have a very special boss lady to here today. Jameer is always bossing up. She's one of those people that's always been entrepreneurial minded. I always feel like she's been creative from day one, always had her flair for fashion. And it's just so important that we recognize the need to follow our intrinsic gifts. This is not something that we were trained to do. This is something that's in you. And I think that so many people fail to realize or recognize the emotional attacks that Black women experience in the workplace. So being an entrepreneur, sometimes it's forced upon you because of trauma. Sometimes you fall into it. So it would be so amazing to talk to Jameer today and really hear about her journey to entrepreneurship and what drives her. So Monica L, what qualities can boss ladies cultivate, in your opinion, to prepare for an entrepreneurial life? Ooh, Coach Kaya. <laughs> now that is a loaded question. You did better asking me how my day was. Okay. Um, <laughs> I think we are faith-based. So I always think God first. That's what you need. The spirituality, the mindset to know that there is support outside of you you know, a higher level of support. Also, I think to have a plan, to really have a plan, like have systems in place, have some type of support. And support can be many different things. It can obviously be capital. It can be having a mentor in the industry that we hope that Boss Lady Conversations provide to our Boss Lady listeners. But I also think it's so much about, obviously, professionalism, because we talked about branding and how you are a brand. So when you put yourself out there, 
your customers, your potential customers, they're looking at you and how you conduct yourself. Professionalism, obviously, is just goes without saying with your brand, no, regardless of what industry you're in. And just really having that willpower because you're not a nine to five anymore. When you're an entrepreneur, you are every day. You may have to separate your friends. You may have to put certain gatherings on hold because you really have to work. Now, what I can say from my endeavors is that I feel like what I give out, I get back. So Mm -hmm. that's the reward. Like, I feel like if we do those social media posts, if we reach out to people with our products, you get something in return. Now, the other side is if you don't, (laughs) then, you know, it's it's a blessing if you get something back, which makes you be that leader. And again, determination. Every day is not a good day. And there's not always profit in the beginning. So as a lot of people say, you know, still have your nine to five, which a lot of people don't want to hear. But, you know, have that nine to five as you pursue your passion and your entrepreneurial spirit. That's what, you know, comes to mind for me at this time. I love that. That's so important. And I think with so many boss ladies, they'll tell you it didn't happen overnight. This was a a process. They had a plan. They got prayed up and made sure, you know, that they got their ducks in a row and gave themselves that space to grow and expand. And I think we will learn about a lot about that today. Today's topic, how to honor your unique and intrinsic path to entrepreneurship with property management franchise owner, Jameer Smith. And so I'm going to tell you a little bit more about our amazing boss lady. So Jameer is a serial entrepreneur since creating and developing Shower Caps by Jameer in 2006. She sold shower caps in local salons and internationally while obtaining her bachelor's degree at FIT where she majored in advertising, marketing, and communications. After the 2008 recession, she structured her plan and shut down the company. In 2013, after spending eight years in the interior design industry, where she managed numerous residential projects within the New York City and Hamptons area, she resigned from her employer in April, 2021. Over the course of 2021 and 2022, Jameer obtained her New Jersey real estate license purchased a property management franchise and traveled to Utah for certification training and opened her doors for business in June of 2021. Jameer understands the determination needed to make a major career change. She is a passionate boss lady and she's very passionate about her role as entrepreneur and has plans on developing programs to assist other upcoming entrepreneurs on their journey. Whoa. (laughs) Now that is a boss lady who is destined to shine. So let's give a warm boss lady conversations. Welcome to property management franchise owner, Jameer Smith. (laughs) Hi everyone. (laughs) Hi, thank you so much for having me. Oh my God, that was an amazing intro and I'm so looking forward to talking to you both. We're so happy to have you here. You've done so many amazing things. And the best part is that it's just the beginning. It is, yes. We always ask our boss ladies, what's your intention for being on our show today? What do you hope in boss lady listeners will walk away with? I would like to share as much as I can because I know when I was on my path for trying to figure out life and just figuring out how do you start is the hardest part. And then making the actual step is the other challenge. So I'm hoping that I can share information from where I was to sort of pull that information. So maybe it could help someone even without having to quit their job, if that's what they're doing, maybe doing it while you're still at your job, you know, and you can do both. So I I hope that my story can help with someone looking to go on that path of entrepreneurship. Oh, I'm sure it will. I wanted to ask you if you could choose one song, one book or movie title that describes your boss lady journey to date, which one would you choose and why? Oh my gosh, I have... So many. So I would say the most important thing, starting a new business or starting a new idea to do something completely new and scary is to find those resources that can help motivate you. You have to find books. You have, I'm a big music fan. You have to find music, your songs that motivate you and whether or not it's a movie. So for me, I internalize 
songs. So one of my favorite songs that I would listen to on repeat is Bigger by Beyonce. I mean, you know, it's it's Beyonce. So the song just resonated with me mainly because of where I was at the time of being employed. And I think Monica L, you touched on this a little bit too. And so did you, Kaya, just talking about being forced into something, whether it's because of your situation that you're in with your employer. And I think I felt that way. And for me, making that change, the song spoke to me because it really made me recall what I really wanted to do and Mm -hmm. what my stance was and what my purpose was and how I wasn't getting that from my employer. I didn't feel that my reviews or anything like that spoke or resonated with who I really was and what I really wanted to do. So that song stuck with me and it helped to motivate me every day I listen and to realize I have what's inside me. And another movie that I I, I love too is um, The Wizard of Oz. We've all probably seen it, but it's a, it's a line in there that, the good witch is saying to Dorothy where she says you had the power all along so having the power is already within you so recognizing it and then turning it around and acknowledging that you have the power and then using that power is the key and that's where I feel that that message resonated with me too so I would watch things and just things would just come at me whether it was an Instagram post or whatever and it just helped to set my path and keep me on track with these are the signs, keep going. And here we are. <laughs> Whoa, I love all of that. I mean, I'm I'm feeling the connection. I mean, I think it's about vibrations and you're being open. I think that messages come through different sources. And so what I heard was purpose and power. And with that, like you say, what is my purpose? And if it's beyond current situation is moving towards that. And that is something to commend yourself on because you could have just sat in that space and not moved and ignored the signs, but you embraced it. So thank you. Thank you for sharing that. It definitely resonates with me. (laughs) Oh, yes. (laughs) So, So with that being said, when did you first get that inkling? Like what was that day or that moment that really spoke to you starting your entrepreneurial path? I would say... What started me is out of, again, frustration with being at my employer. I just had enough. I was applying for jobs. I wasn't satisfied with the work-life balance or imbalance that I was getting from my employer. And I was just burnt out. I was coming home and I said, I can't feel exhausted every single day. That just doesn't feel Mm -hmm. normal. But I knew that I wanted to work. I knew that I wanted to get up every day and do something. I don't, I don't want to have to run for a bus every day to try to just get to some place and sit somewhere for eight hours when my day could have been done in six and I could get home a little early on certain days or work later certain days if I choose to. So I just sort of had to restructure my thought and where I landed was internalizing what I was feeling and remembering who I was. So I remembered when being a child, I used to live in New York City in an apartment building and I used to sell my books that I no longer needed. And I used to have a table, sit sit them in front of my building. And I used to sell them to people walking by. People would buy them for a dollar, however much. And then I would use that to fund my next venture. So maybe the next week I would start selling soda ice. So I would put soda in ice trays and I would sell them in the summertime to my friends in little Ziploc bags. So they would buy them for me, maybe 25 cents. This was maybe the late eighties. So during that process, I realized me thinking in the situation where I was with my employer, I had that, again, still within me from that time. And creating my shower cap business, realizing that it was something that I enjoyed. It was something that gave me that spark because it was my vision. I can do with it what I wanted and grow with it as I wanted. I realized that I didn't want to reinvent a new business again. So I re-strategized and I said, what about a franchise? And I Googled, searched Franchise Expo, something popped up. It was actually something that was coming up in the next week or so. Sundays were my tired rest days after working all week. I didn't want to get out the bed on a Sunday. I pulled myself out of the bed, went to this expo. That day I met a franchise coach. 
I didn't even know they existed. And right. from there, they started my process through the whole franchise journey. That's amazing, Jameer. <laughs> like that is so exciting. Yeah. So it is. It, it, I mean, it's scary, but at the same time, you you really have to look at what brought you to this point. And it's hard to look outside of the bubble when you're in the bubble every day. But pulling that out and just taking a moment to whether you have to journal or whatever you have to do to just realize what your strengths are and what you enjoy, those are where the special moments lie, you know, and that's mm. how you start. And I all like right. what you said about having it inside of you all along. It's like, I'm sure you're looking back and like, wow, now that you're doing it, you know, and yeah. living and living your dream and knowing that there's so much more to come, I'm sure you're looking back like, I really did have it in me all along. Right. It was really, it was there. It was really deep inside. And it took some uncomfortable situations, uncomfortable feelings. And the uncomfortableness I used to push me to the point of being frustrated and that frustration turned into a desire for wanting a better lifestyle and that desire is what motivated me to change my life to the point where now I'm able to enjoy a, a lunch with my husband on a, at two o'clock in the afternoon where I can still go back home if I choose to and finish up work but it just gives me that peace of mind that I've always wanted and without feeling like I have to be accepted I'm just a people person naturally. So I have a lot of clients and people that give me really great comments and reviews about my customer service. And I, I love that because it makes me feel that I'm really doing my job and just being a person. So I have a surprise for you. You do? Oh, oh my God. Is that the shower cap? Wow, Kaya, you really have it? I have it. 16 oh my years God. Later, and I still use it. Get out of here. Conversation. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's the golden pink. That was a top seller. <laughs> oh my God. That is so yeah. funny. <laughs> yeah. I said, I'm going to show her that I still yeah. have the beautiful product. I mean, oh and Jamea, when you did this, I mean, we were young. Like, nobody yes. was doing this. Right. Nobody was doing and I didn't this. see it anywhere. And I think that's what brought me to that idea. I said, you know what? I don't see, I did it out of a, a need for my own need, not having my hair changed a lot. I changed my hair almost every other, however, but I just needed something that could accommodate my different hairstyles. And they were just never either too big or too not supportive enough. The back of my hair would always get wet. So it was just yeah. multi. So I said, let me recreate Again, using something out of finding an issue with something and trying to resolve it. Again, that's an entrepreneur as well. So just doing that. And I was just like, you know, this is not so bad. And just doing it myself. And I had my team, which is my supportive husband. I had my mom who was a seamstress. So everybody was involved with the process. And to say that I was actually at Circle of Sisters and I have, I actually have pictures and I, I can send you some too. But I have like a picture of Tammy Roman where she was actually, her mouth was wide open, shocked, looking at the shower cap. That was like a pivotal moment for me. Yeah. I'm so shocked you have that still. Oh my gosh, Kaya. <laughs> I no, love so that, Because <laughs> only yeah. now do you see people really having fun with shower caps. Like you are such an innovative person. Like this was... 2006 right and so now you might find some more variety some jumbo caps but before, before yeah. no yeah and they weren't stylish and I think at that time I was in the in the process of getting married back then and I just didn't like the the plastic shower cap look being married <laughs> you know so I said what's cute you know what's better than having a I think I had cheetah print I had I had different sequins around some of them I had one for a bridal look I had all different types it was so fun. It was very creative. I do miss it. I yeah. do. <laughs> Who knows, right? Who knows? Who knows, right? You might right. make a comeback. I still yeah. Have Let's talk about it. Let's get some <laughs> partnership going. The right? boss ladies need that. I can okay. see that. <laughs> All right. You never know. Exactly. I mean, you spoke on so much. And I love that you said about your support circle and everyone feeding into your vision. 
Because the way I see it, like you're innovative, you're definitely, you know, beyond your time. Because as you were speaking about selling back your books, you know, that's a whole industry now that a lot of people do online, selling back textbooks or any kind of books. And then just, you, you could have created a lemonade stand, but you said, no, I'm going to do something a little bit different, but kind of the same idea. So I love that. So that definitely was in you prior to meeting any coach or going to any conference. But with that being said, I think a lot of times for a lot of boss ladies and just people in general, finances hold many people back thinking that I'm barely making ends meet. So how can I now invest into this? And when you talk about a franchise, so can you tell the boss ladies a little bit more about how you were able to purchase a franchise as an interior designer? Yeah, for sure. So I would say it it's a process that there's a lot of planning that's involved because you can imagine the amount of paperwork that I had to sign, read, conference calls, Zoom, Zoom calls. There's a lot that's involved there. So it's not something that happens overnight. However, knowing that I started the idea and the concept of wanting to leave my career, it started in 2019. And to know that I actually resigned from my job in 2021, it took me that amount of time to plan. And I was still planning even after I left my job. So it's not something that happens overnight. And I think the best strategy is to, as I know it's very hard, but pay off as much debt that you possibly have. Any little bills, major bills, Thank God student loans just got deducted by $10,000. I mean, it's a it's a cup out the ocean, but it's something. So utilizing whatever it is that the country or the city or your, your state is providing for you to make yourself better, look for those programs. Sign up for those things that can help you get rid of debt. And so that process I took serious and I, and I really... I'm very good with credit cards. I try not to spend too much, but I just made sure to stop shopping a little bit. And when I did shop, I would shop for things that I knew would be timeless pieces because I knew I wasn't going to be shopping for a little bit. I just put some things on the back burner and I just knew I had enough clothes. I don't need to keep over shopping. So that was another very important and hard decision to make. But also working with a franchise coach, which I didn't know exists, they gave me an option of picking between five different franchises that she narrowed down based on my goals that I provided to her and my interest. So out of the five, I had two, two that I narrowed it down to. And one was being like a mentor or having a group where you speak and you gather people. This was all of, of course, 2020, we know what happened right as that was happening. I said, there's no way I can gather a group. That was not a good idea. The cost for that was very low. So there are options for someone that's looking to buy a franchise where you don't have such a big overhead. Another important factor that I decided when I was purchasing a franchise, I did not want a brick and mortar. I didn't want something that I had to pay a rent amount for every month. Knowing what happened during the recession, I wanted something that was recession proof. So I was looking at other factors and what does real estate, everyone needs real estate. Everyone needs some place to live. So that can market fluctuates. Yes. But I think that was the pivotal moment where I said, this is it. So I eliminated the last one and I decided I was going forward with this. I did utilize the services of having um, a small business loan. So I did take advantage of that because it was available to me, but I made sure to pick a number that's not going to keep me in constraints for too long, but it was comfortable enough for me to get my business running and operating and to have that in place. Another key is also having like a 401k, if you have one, just to have as a safety net for yourself, have your savings set up, save a few, or even if you can, like I saved at least a year worth of rental payments and any other emergency payments, just as a safety net, because everything runs out. But I think planning that takes a lot of thought, time, Um, I have a very supportive husband. So we had lots of conversations and with his support, I made the decision. So that's where we ended. Love, 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 love. I mean, you was just dropping gem after gem after gem. (laughs) I became a listener. I was like, okay, (laughs) I was taking notes like, okay, (laughs) plan, 
Step one, <laughs> get the coach, <laughs> no brick and mortar, have your money saved. So you won't be stressed out. I, and you're right about overspending. For some of us, that's our guilty pleasure or that's our therapy. Just go out and buy something, make me feel better. Even if I don't need it and I got 50 in the same color already. <laughs> so I like that you said that. And again, it just feels like you were just moving to your next phase of entrepreneurship. That's what I heard. And you had guidance and you knew the things you did not want. And that's important. Yes. Right. Setting those foundations and and blocking off the things that can be an easy distraction. I mean, during quarantine, I think the most important thing we learned is we can do a lot of things ourselves. Our nails, our hair, have to be creative. And I think after I realized I really don't need to go to the nail salon every two weeks. So what is that $40? Where's that $40 going? And I'm very crafty. So I started doing a lot of things myself. Now I can't even fathom sitting in a nail salon for two hours. I just, unless it's like just to relax if I'm getting a pedicure, but certain right, things. I did. Yes. So mm-hmm. I did make sacrifices on things that I just, I chose myself not to do and I'm okay without it for now. <laughs> so Jamea, what's a typical work week like for you, boss lady? So typical work week, Mondays are usually very uh, the busiest I would say because you can imagine just having well I'll start with Saturday and Sunday Saturday and Sundays are my weekend and I make sure to make it my weekend because that's part of our work-life balance we can run ourselves to the ground where we're no good for anyone no good for our business no good for our home no good for ourselves so those two days are still very important and I treat it like I did when I was employed with an employer So my Monday turns into my busy day where I do all of my, and I make sure to block off time on my calendar between nine and 11, because that morning hour is very important, whether I decide to go to the gym and I have my hours, right? My hours are between, I would say six and nine. So that's whether I'm going to the gym, whether I'm stretching, whether I'm taking a bath, whether I'm journaling, you know, those, that's my power hour where I have for myself. And I utilize that time. My work day is blocked off from nine and 11 because that allows me to catch up to anything that came in that I, that requires my attention, whether I have to do some financials for the business and I can focus. There's nobody booking on my calendar at that time. What happens after 11 is all, you know, whatever comes in and usually catching up with emails, following up with whatever I couldn't get to on Friday and the rest of the week, I keep a routine. I'm up at six o'clock every day. I set my alarm. So I like to keep my routine as I did when I was employed. You get up, you, whether or not now I don't have to commute as much. I can, I can work from my home certain days. So I, if I choose to, that saves me a trip so I can just go to the gym, but it's, it's important to have that balance. And now I can cook dinner at home, you know, for me and my husband and just enjoy that downtime. But Some days I may have to run off to go visit clients. Some days I go into the office because I choose to, and I actually enjoy going in because it gives you a sense of community in a sense, because you get to talk to people that are in the same industry, whether you're working, you know, talking to other real estate agents. So I like to conversate with people. We pounce ideas off of each other. So I actually enjoy leaving my house to go there now. So, and then Fridays, I, I do my summer Fridays. So I do try to, slow it down a little bit after one o'clock on Friday and then change it back over when after Labor Day. So work-life balance is very important here. I love that you're so organized. Yeah. <laughs> I try you to be, to be right? like, yes, you have to. You'll drive yourself crazy like if you're not. So you have to be. That's amazing. I just have to go back one step because I just want to know how did it feel like after all of your planning to actually give that letter a resignation to your employer? Uh, Oh, (laughs) that took a moment. It, I think I wrote that letter with a little joy in the pit of my stomach, just saying that this is the moment that I've been waiting for, Mm. thinking back at all the times that I've either had an uncomfortable situation with my employer or feeling a lack of with my employer. And just knowing that I was proud to say that 
I'm not leaving to go to a competitor. I'm leaving to start my own business. You know, so I think that was the biggest win for me to feel that it was a step for growth. And it's not anything that they helped me with. It's something that I did on my own. However, I do give a lot of credit to my previous employers because it did shape my path of growth and to become where I am now. I had the pleasure of working in the music industry. I've worked under at Bad Boy. So I worked with Puffy. I've worked with like Punk Master Flex right out of high school. So I had the pleasure of being around a lot of different personalities and that shaped who I am now. So bringing it back to the moment of giving my resignation, I was just pleased. I took my letter and I wrote it very carefully. I made sure to get what I needed to say in there. And I was very happy to give my exit interview. And I was very honest about things that I felt that I wasn't being treated fairly on. And I addressed because one, I knew that I I wasn't going back. There is no plan B. So this is it. And that's where I left it. However, I'm not the type to burn bridges. So I did always like to leave on a good note. I don't want to look back. I just know that this, that was it. So I never looking back. It's only going forward. Absolutely. I love what you said. It builds character. You know, we can say a lot of things about our previous and current employers, but it does build character. Like you say, working with different personalities now that you are your own boss, now you know how to deal with them. And, you know, so you have a lot of lessons learned. So I like looking at that as a positive. Yes. And it's my forward, advancing. So yeah. congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. No regrets whatsoever. Just learning lessons. That's all it is. What advice do you have for other boss ladies who are trying to find their unique path, but they're just not sure where to begin? Yes. I remember being there and there's days when I'm still there. You know, you, you, I think tying back to my story of being an entrepreneur at a young age and doing what I used to do, I think tying into what you enjoy, it's not just looking at what's happening now, sometimes you have to self-reflect to yourself and say, what it is, what is it that I enjoy? What is it that, what are you watching on TV? What are you, what's catching your attention? What are people giving you compliments the most about? Are you a very good organizer? Do people say that you're very good with math? Do people say, pay attention to those compliments that you receive because those are your keys and those tie into what it is that you can turn into a business. And those, it may not always be that you may be a financial accountant. Maybe you just may be good at knowing your numbers and that's a big component of a business. So I think having those keys and tricks and just knowing what it is that brings you happiness, joy, whether it's lifestyle, what's the lifestyle that you would like to live And then maybe think backwards as to how do you have to, what do you have to do to get to that point? Someone may love children. Maybe you want to open up a babysitting, you know, center. It may just be anything, but just starting with something and just writing down everything it is that you feel that you're good at or that you love. And I think, I'm sure you coach Kyra, I'm sure you know that pulling those ideas are, are, are super important in, in channeling and to get to those ideas. So Absolutely. And it allows you to be your own cheerleader. You know, you really start to pay attention. You're like, you know, you know what? And I love what you said about like, sometimes your employer can say things about you or make you feel inferior for whatever reason. And having that list that you can refer to the things that you know about yourself, that the people who love you and care about you have spoken into your life can be really helpful. So I love that you made that, you know, that correlation. It's like taking, tuning out the negative voices and tapping into like, what is my future? What is what is the lifestyle of my dreams? Yeah, absolutely. Those are some valuable key points that are sometimes hidden in between the stressful moments as well. You know, you may look at your review if you're employed, look at your review instead of looking at all the negative things. Sometimes there's little pieces in there that you can pull from to say that I'm actually pretty good at that, you know? And I think one thing that resonated with me the most is, I was utilized a lot for my marketing, but not in its fullest extent. And with me coming into a franchise, my marketing background, you know, from FIT graduating, I minored in like special events and things like that. And I did social media for a lot of businesses, 
local businesses here in the area. But one thing that gave me my extra spark was maybe six months after joining with the franchise, they realized my marketing skills and they asked me to join two different marketing councils. So one marketing council was with the big guys that are actually doing and has been doing this for years. And they brought me on to be a, a second voice for that. And then another marketing council that is targeting, you know, doing newsletters, social media, things like that. And we just brainstorm on ideas. So seeing that a franchise that just was starting to get to know me saw those opportunities and I'm an entrepreneur and I'm running my own business, but I still made time because that's where my passion lies. I love marketing. I love social media. I love all of it. And they realize that and they say, hey, let me bring her on because they recognized it. So yeah. <laughs> I love it. It feels so good to be recognized. Yes, it sure does. It feels amazing. And I would say that in a company that doesn't have a lot of women of color and to be recognized as the very few women of color to be on the councils that I'm added on to, I was like flattered, honored, and I use my voice to not just represent myself, but also the others that are that haven't considered buying into a franchise yet, you know, because we see it as an obstacle sometimes, but it doesn't always have to be. We're we're in there. I think it's important to really utilize those skill sets. And it feels amazing when it's acknowledged. Congratulations. Thank and we just you. want to give a, a, a late shout out. Happy belated birthday as well. So <laughs> we want to say that. Okay, so much. <laughs> yes, yes. Celebrating all month long. So don't worry. Right. Yes, yes. And we go, we all celebrate all year. How about that? Because <laughs> every day is truly a blessing. I really like what you said in the beginning about the imbalance of work life and you really have honed in on making sure that there is a balance in your current state. And you spoke about, you know, your support system. So with that being said, we talk a lot about self-care because we know that's so important and there's so many different levels of self-care. So what does that look like for you in your present day? Ah, self-care is so important. I feel that it's, your mental state that is so sensitive as an entrepreneur because you have so much to think about in one day, in one second of your day that blocking out things that can cause stress and having that tunnel vision is is a muscle. And I realized that I've strengthened that muscle, one, when it comes to personal life, two, when it comes to business. Because if you get distracted by the things that are coming at you all day long, you are not thinking clearly because you are looking at everything else and taking it on, taking on everything as a whole. But if you are just tunnel vision and you can just see from here to the exit, then you know what steps you have to take one at a time. So I choose to bite off a little bit at a time. And I try not to think about what my other franchise partners are doing, whether they're growing at a rapid pace or and maybe I'm not growing at such a rapid pace as I would like to be, but I like the pace that I'm going because I'm still able to have all the balls in the air and catch every single one of them and not feel that I'm not getting back and servicing my clients the way I need to because I'm growing as a company. I'm looking forward to growing my team. And, you know, so having that being said, my mental state is so important and knowing what I don't want to take on. I've actually declined business mm. as of certain personalities that I just chose not to work with. And you can tell right away who those people are and you know, this is not going to be good for me. And I decide to decline that business. So it helped me in the long run. I know it, but that again, self-care, it's just what makes you feel good. And it's very important. We can burn ourselves out, but we have to refuel ourselves at the same time as well. I love that. <laughs> that is unlike what you can do in the workplace, right? You can't just decline <laughs> your <No>. co-workers. <laughs> but 
when you are the boss, that's one thing I do love about coaching too. You know, I, I can't even tell my clients enough how much I enjoy them. And I'm just like, this feels so good to be able yeah. to attract amazing people who I love working with. So I can definitely yeah. relate to what you're saying. I love that. I'm so glad that you have that. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it's definitely, um, it, it takes a lot of strength and, you know, I never want to lose business, but I, I, if something is going to cost you more money and time, it's just not going to work. And I think I love Big Sean as an artist. He said, a peace of mind is very expensive. <laughs> it's, it's very pricey. So sometimes you have to pay the cost. You have a peace of mind. So these are just little things that I recite to myself on those days and it helps me get through. And it keeps your energy freed up for amazing opportunities that yes. will be. Yes. yes, exactly. Keeping the energy freed up. That's an, I have to keep that one in, in my pocket. I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> you have to leave a little space for your energy. Yes. So we know you're a boss lady that never stops dreaming. So we wanted to ask you, you know, we always are asking our boss ladies to manifest, you know, their highest dreams. Like what's that super scary yet amazing dream that you have for yourself or your business that you are, you want it and you can see it, but it even feels like very large to think about manifesting it. There's a lot. I'll just give a little backstory. So when I started the franchise, I always knew that I wanted to do something on the back end because I always wanted something that was monetary, but also fulfilling. And prior to me, even starting the franchise, I do still have my blog is Go Glam Girl blog. And it's like a self-empowerment and motivating blog post that I use and I'm going to turn that into the next phase of my venture. So saying that, I'm also, this is exclusive for the Boss Lady podcast. So I'm also working on a journal for future entrepreneurs that can trigger thoughts, that can motivate, that can pull ideas and, and inspire you to really sit down and think of how to get from planning to executing your, your goal. So it's going to be an easy read. And I would like to have this out by the end of the year. I'm, I'm really pushing it by doing that. But if I can't, I would say by the end of next year, the very latest. However, my big and scary goal is I would love to be able to either have a course or teach entrepreneurs like in a class mm -hmm. setting of how to grow. You know, we learn so much about academics, but I don't think there's enough teaching about entrepreneurship. And we're forced mm -hmm. to make a decision to be employed, but not educated enough about all the different avenues that we can go in as entrepreneurs. So it doesn't have to be so scary, you know, and if you have someone that has that guidance and can give you the instruction, like I was so thankful to have from my franchise coach who held my hand through the whole process. Mm -hmm. And I would love to collaborate with her and expose her to everyone because she's such a warm human being. And just the energy that I felt from her support, if I can shine that light on the others, I would love to be able to do that. So yeah, so that's one of my big goals that I hope to have very soon. Oh, you got it. You got it. And you already got two people. <laughs> we put Kaya Sider for both. Yes, yes. And all the other boss ladies. And we will promote it as well. So definitely when it drops. Oh, I love that. And you're right. I feel like even though we're pro secondary education and higher ed and degrees and all that amazing things. But you're right, like, let's really teach. And I know we have MBA programs and things of that nature. And I'm not, I'm downplaying that because it definitely plays an amazing role. But I, but I think that there's also something to just giving us the very basics for those who may don't have the resources to secure that or just don't have the time. Just give us the basics of, like you said, how to plan or the, like the light, like you said, the light that your coach provided for you. So I can definitely see that on various platforms and I'm excited. So we're your biggest cheerleader. So go, go, go. <laughs> yes. yes, absolutely. I don't know if you've um, seen it, but another inspiring moment was when um, I think it's Pinky Coles who spoke during Clark Atlanta's commencement speech during the, gra the graduation and 
she said something that was so striking, I'm sure to mm -hmm. the staff members there, but she said, I want you to fail. And I mm -hmm. think when you hear that from someone, it's a shock. But when you think about it and what she meant, it's not life being perfect. It's life experienced through the failures and how do you pull yourself mm -hmm. up from that? And if anyone hasn't seen it, I highly recommend going back and just going on YouTube and seeing her speech at Clark Atlanta for, I think it was last year's graduation. It's to this day, I, I still love it. And it's, it's, I played it at my team meeting and I think it's a very good speech to listen to. Wow. Look at you. And, and you're feeding right into the next question, <laughs> which is which boss ladies inspire you into your greatness? So I would have to pull it pull it in and I would have to stay more into my home and my foundation. And my foundation to me starts with my family. So I would definitely say my mother, you know, to start with, she's a very strong woman. She's the type of person that can conversate with anyone and make you feel just as warm. And I think that resonates with me a lot, not, not just because I'm her daughter. Um, and then she's she was married to my dad for over 40 years before he passed in 2020. So having that foundation and knowing how to put herself second at times, but also knowing the importance of family resonated with me and it, it helped me become who I am today. I would also say my mother-in-law, who's, who's an amazing individual. She's a cancer survivor and she's also retired. And she just recently won an award from Mayor Adams for her um, support in the community. And she's just a phenomenal human being who just is relentless. Like she just loves life. And, you know, I look at those surrounding me and, and those stories is what really gets me to feel appreciative of, for life. Perfect. I love it. <laughs> I love it. And you're right. It's something about like people are people. I think so many times people get hung up on titles and they treat someone with a title differently than they treat someone who may don't have the same level of education or, or the material things they have. And at the end of the day, people are people. Yeah. And yeah. so the ability to appreciate a person that speaks volume. I love that. I love that. Yes. Yeah, so, and shout out to your mom and mother-in-law. And I just love that you have that support around you. And I also want to highlight that you've been mentioning your husband. I know you've been married for a while. So is there anything that you wanted to say about how, how you're supported by love in your oh entrepreneurial gosh. journey? Yes. I don't think I would have made it this far without my husband. I mean, he's been like my number one cheerleader for every business that I've ever had selling shower caps as a bald headed man and selling it <laughs> conviction is a moment in my life that I will never forget. But also with this business now and just the support that I had leading up to it and him seeing the vision, even though it's not necessarily his vision, it's a vision that he can see the potential in and he believes in it because he's so supportive. And um, I'm so thankful and he helps me out a lot with just information, support, advice, honesty, brutally honest, you know, which is sometimes hard for me to swallow, but I do listen. I'm just, I'm forever thankful. Yeah, we've been married for 15 years and together for 20 years. Our anniversary was, was just August 3rd. That just oh my happened. goodness, happy belated anniversary. You just have all it's these celebrations <laughs> happening. Right, August is them. the month. <laughs> I packed them all into August. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I love that. I did see that on social media and I just love your social media presence. So it's just so vibrant. And with that, let's tell our boss lady listeners, what's the best way to contact you so they don't miss anything about all your amazing endeavors? Yes. So I would love if everyone can follow me on social media. I'm under Go Glam Girl. So at Go Glam Girl, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok recently just joined TikTok. I do have my website, which is Go Glam Girl blog at .com. So I'll be adding more content to that. And, you know, any information that I'm releasing will land there. So this way, my journal that I'm working on, any 
webinars that I have, you know, so that's the best way, way to find me. Thank you so much. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. Jameer, you shared so many gems with us today. So I'm just going to recap some of the many pearls of wisdom that you left us with today. Number one, find the resources that can help you stay motivated. The resources will help you better understand who you really are and what you really want to do. Number two, recognize that you have the power and use that power. The uncomfortable feelings often push us to change our lives. Entrepreneurial wisdom comes from finding solutions to our problems. Pay off your debt so that you can utilize the funds to support your business. Be mindful of over shopping. Work with the coach if you can and understand what your options are. Do you want a business that's recession proof? There are many options for entrepreneurs. Mindset. Utilize loans and resources you feel comfortable using to help you build your business. Save, save, save. Be creative with your needs. Do you really have to spend the extra money? Pay attention to the compliments you receive. Think about those things and how you can turn these gifts into a business you love. Imagine the lifestyle you want and think backwards. Write down everything and try to use your voice to represent others who are coming behind you. Wow, you got it good. That was good. <laughs> Coach Kaya knows how to run it back for real <laughs> in real time. Yes. Amazing. In a nutshell, that was amazing. And I'm so honored to be here with both of you. You are such amazing ladies. And I am so thankful for you finding me and, and having me on your show. I would, I'm, I'm such a fan of anything boss ladies. So thank you again for having me. Oh, no, thank, thank you. you. And we really hope that you've enjoyed connecting with the wonderful boss lady, Jameer Smith, and learning about how you can boss up and find your unique path. Thank you so much, Jameer, and come back soon. We yeah, really come really back with that journal. Yes, yeah, I will. As soon as it's out, I'm here first.